The SWOG S1007 trial, otherwise known as RX Bonder, uh, was a really important trial looking at the use of genomic assays uh, to predict benefit or not of chemotherapy. And it, it, in a way, followed on the TaylorX trial, which was a trial looking at the 21 gene recurrence score in ER positive, HER2 negative, lymph node negative patients. And what the TaylorX trial showed, which we've all seen, is that, um, that actually the recurrence score and age and or menopausal status actually make a difference. So for those with a high recurrence score, there's clear benefit from chemo. In Taylor X, if you had a low or intermediate recurrence score and you were over 50, there was no benefit of chemo. And if you were under 50, for the most part, there wasn't a large benefit from chemo, but as you approach that cut point of 25, 26 with the recurrence score, the, the women under 50 seem to be showing some chemo benefit. So that's the data from what we already knew. The RX Bonder trial was a similar trial, but now it was looking at the one to three lymph node group. So where cancer was involving between one and three lymph nodes. And about well over 5,000 women enrolled in this trial. And what happened was uh, a recurrence score was run and if the recurrence score was 26 or greater, you went off study and it was recommended that you get chemo. So the study was a randomization between endocrine therapy alone or endocrine therapy and chemotherapy given sequentially with the chemo first uh, if your recurrence score was 25 or less. And the hypothesis was based on some retrospective data out of prior SWOG and other trials, that the lower the recurrence score, the less benefit from chemo, even if the tumor had already spread to one to three lymph nodes. Now, we found out two important pieces of information. It was actually fascinating. At the third interim analysis, we did not have anywhere near the number of events that had been calculated in for a formal analysis, but the uh, Independent Data Safety Monitoring Committee uh, so what they saw triggered them to want to at least discuss whether we should release the results early. And so a conversation with the National Cancer Institute was held um, and a few key people, it was otherwise kept blinded. And it was decided that this information at this time was powerful enough and strong enough that we needed it in order to better inform our patients and make treatment decisions. So what happened was that for women 50 or over, and this was a stratification factor, it, the, the, the menopausal status was asked up front. So for women who identified themselves as being post-menopausal at the time of study entry, which was about two thirds, um, there was no benefit seen from the addition of chemotherapy to endocrine therapy if their recurrence score was 25 or less. And we separately looked at the one to 14 group, the 14 to 25 group, no hint of benefit. So ER positive, HER2 negative, recurrence score 25 or less, if you're postmenopausal, no benefit from chemo. That's really important because now we have good prospective data that we can safely withhold all chemotherapy and all its toxicities uh, from that group and not impact recurrence uh, or uh, deaths. Now, in the group that was premenopausal when they entered, again, about a third of the patients, we saw something entirely different. And we could not find a recurrence score below which there wasn't some benefit from chemotherapy, a very different finding. And even in the low recurrence score group, we saw a benefit of chemo. And that's also very important because I think what it suggests is that women who are premenopausal need to be treated differently. Now, of course, the big question that we're all asking after seeing this data is, was it really the chemo or was it the common side effect of chemo, which is premature menopause and at least temporary, if not permanent suppression of ovarian function in this ER positive group of young women? So we're not 100% sure that it's the chemo. We need to study that more. But clearly, just giving standard endocrine therapy without ovarian function suppression, it should not be the norm in these premenopausal women with one to three positive lymph nodes.